to everyone, and welcome to Film the Um, sorry, wrong intro. Um, hello, everyone. William Paul Dusk here, back in the video. And today's video is going to be a bit different. Let me explain. A while back on Skype, a bunch of me and my friends were talking, and um, someone brought the topic of the Mad Bomber. If you don't know what the topic is, let me explain. Back in 2009, over six years ago, a well-known YouTuber called Leo Can Video uploaded a video called Thomas Mad Bomber Episode 1, and it started one of the best Thomas fan films ever at over 7 million views to this day. This story was based around the engines in Soto, but the engines had different personalities, different names, and the whole entire plotline was altered, uh, revolving around a bombing that was happening on Soto. The whole entire sh thing was shot with Ertl models with intricate um, HO chassis fitted to them. It was amazing. Leo put so much hard work and effort and, and craftsmanship into his models and to the whole entire film. But sadly, a lot of uh, the multi multiple variables um, prevented them from making episode two. More on that if you can check out Leo's channel in the description below. This has to be by far the most inspiring video for me, myself, to start YouTube. This video, Thomas Blows the Stack and Thomas and the Killer Cars, are videos that just shaped me to be to be me. To be like, what it shaped me as a human to start YouTube, and I'm honestly so grateful for that. But since then, to my knowledge, nobody knows who the Mad Bomber is. So, like people have made videos about this topic before, but none of them have really. Uh, uh, um, we racked up the, the hints and clues that Leo left for us and um, tried to figure out who it is really. And besides the fact that most of them were made like four years ago. So today, I have come up with all the clues, all the hints that Leo has left for us, me analyzing all the Mad Bomber videos in his original episode one. So today, we are going to figure out who the Mad Bomber really is. But before we do that, I think it's important that we can have some other opinions. So let me just see what my friends think who the Mad Bomber is. I think Trevor is the Mad Bomber because Leo Kim video stated that the Mad Bomber was a steam engine who was in the, who was at um, every single bombing. And looking at um, all the Mad Bomber like bombing events, Trevor is the only steam engine who is present at all of them. I think the Mad Bomber is actually a clone or one of Thomas Thomas's siblings because in a dream sequence, Andy Diesel tells Thomas that the Mad Bomber looks exactly like you. I think that it's uh, Sir Topham Hat, but he had, but he also had. Uh, influence from Andy or D261 because he because we see Sir Topham out talking with with the Andy on the table on the turntable and stuff and you know he, he won't and Andy wants to get rid of the steamies like because you know he's a diesel and he's a bad diesel. So now that we're done that, we are now going to finally figure out who the... No, sorry. I, I have to do something first. While I was researching all this information, I found out so many things that I didn't know about the film before. Like, I thought about... if I feel like I thought they were different, but then it totally altered my whole entire opinion on the film when I... um watched all these video all the mad bomber videos like three times so now that i've done that i really need to address them things and i think that'll help us better understand more about the mad bomber so let me just address three things first off i want everyone to know that the blue paint on the back of mute's cab in episode one isn't because what andy thinks it is have you been repairing that pesky thomas engine for a chap who doesn't say much looks like you've been batting for the other side it is actually because Mute, if you haven't noticed, all the cryptics like Time's Up and No Steam left on the walls by the Mad Bomber, it's in blue. And that's the exact same shade of blue on Mute's cab. It makes total sense. So Mute is obviously in on the Mad Bomber's plans. I, I feel like a lot of people have picked that up, but going off of me asking my friends, a lot of them still didn't know that. So I just thought I would address that out there. Next, I just want to address that the Mad Bomber is not on the user side. Because while scrolling through the comments of that video, a lot of people were thinking, oh, Andy's the Mad Bomber. But no, he actually isn't. Like, 
Well, you probably knew that because he, he got blown up in episode one. But the Mad Bomber isn't even on the Diesel side. Because if you haven't seen one of the trailers for episode two, then the cloning Diesel facility, it gets bombed. Like, at the very end, the Mad Bomber bombs it, which just shows that they're not on the Diesel side. So you may be asking yourself, William, why wouldn't Andy just ride out the Mad Bomber? Since Andy clearly states he knows who the Mad Bomber is in episode one and, episode, and one of the trailers for episode two, why couldn't he just wrap them out? Because why would Andy want his Diesel cloning facility to get bombed? That makes no sense. Well, there's actually two reasons. The first reason is because, like I said, most of their, even though most of their preferences aren't the same, that's like the Mad Bomber and Andy's, or the Grand Designers, more or less, there's still a lot of them are the same. So technically, if Andy were to rat out the Mad Bomber, he would be helping the steam engines because the Mad Bomber is terrorizing the steam engines. So he would technically be helping them out, which Andy doesn't clearly want to do. The second reason is because, well, again, like I stated, the Mad Bomber is, in a way, technically doing the Grand Designer and Andy a favor, because when you think about it, they both want steam engines to be abolished, because, you know, they, the Mad Bomber's bombing the railway and, like, causing lots of trouble. Um, but the thing is, like, they both kind of want the same thing, so in a way, if Andy were to wrap them out, it would make no sense, because the Grand Designer is basically getting his job done without even asking the Mad Bomber. The Mad Bomber is basically doing him a job. So if he were to rat out the Mad Bomber and the Mad Bomber would be found, they would have to, they, the job would be a lot more harder for them. So they just make being, Andy and the Grand Designer would be making it harder on themselves, if that makes any sense. Finally, I want to address that in episode one, so Topham Hat was not at fault. Well, at least in my opinion. So let me explain. So if you haven't seen in one of the another trailer, the last trailer in fact for episode two, there was a, a shot of the two Sir Topham Hats uh, standing on a tower looking over Sodor, and that means that there's two Sir Topham Hats. Sir Topham Hat is a twin. Um, so going back to episode one, when the sh everyone suspects the shadowy figure switching the points is Sir Topham Hat, it's not. I actually think it's his twin. To be honest, I actually think Sir Tom Matt's twin is the Grand Designer. So let me explain. First off, Andy always refers to the Grand Designer being in a way higher position than Sir Tom Matt, meaning it obviously has to be an the person, and because he's at a higher ranking of him. And the second reason is because I've come up with a bit of backstory theory. So the bombing in the potato field cut off the coal supply since that's the line going up to the coal mine. So the fact that it was cut off, the top of hat is now forced to move to buy new diesels. So he, in persuasion from his twin, who the top of hat does not know who the, he is, the grand designer, he he did under persuasion of his twin since they're uh, related he starts to purchase more diesels but unknown to the fat controller that uh, the grand designer or his twin is actually using to top him hat to um more uh, uh what's the word to uh, using him basically to um spread out his diesels and spread out his plans for world dom or diesel domination Whew, okay now that we have all that out of the way, and me stuttering a bunch, I'm so sorry. Um, I think we really need to get into the real reason you guys clicked on this video, and that is to figure out who the Mad Bomber is. So finally, we're going to get into that. But now, just to make it a bit easier on myself and you guys of viewing, I've compiled a list of hints that Leo has left for us to figure out who the Mad Bomber is. So that all the hints that I found while watching all the videos were... Earl, in your box. Now shut it. Andy knows who the Mad Bomber is. Mad Bomber is a steam engine. Trevor's at every bombing. Explosives are in the LPG works. And that is an evil twin. Now, a lot of these hints probably don't make any sense whatsoever, but I'll cover that in a bit. So now, we're, I think we need to focus on the most important, or one of the most important hints that he, they left, which is that it's an evil twin. So... As you've, if you've watched the Mad Bomber more than one time, you've probably noticed that there are a lot of twins. And like I said before with the Storm Hats. So let's just go over all the twins that we have um, seen in the in Mad Bomber. First we have Earl and Alan, which are actually the two duck models used in the film. We also have the two Sir Tom Hats, which we kind of have to consider because they are twins, you know. And Chris, Goddess John, and Wilson. Now, in the intro, uh, uh, Leo pairs... 
Chris and um, sorry, yeah, Chris and Scott and John as like together, and then Wilson as one. Well, we all know in the show that Wilson are sixteen, or Scott and John are Wilbur. They are the actual twins in real life. So just to be safe, I kind of paired them all into one three group, uh, just to be just to, you know be safe. So now that we have all the twins compiled, I think we need to get onto one of the uh, just probably as important of the. Uh, of a hint that Leo left, that is a steam engine, uh, as Andy says in the dream sequence, um, to Thomas. So we have to cancel out the fat controllers because they're obviously, they are, um, they're not steam engines. And th I guess that kind of makes sense because so Tom Hat couldn't be the mad bomber because he, why would he bomb his own engines and steam engines and railways? Um, and going off my theory that the other one is the Grand Designer, uh, it makes no sense for the Grand Designer to be the Mad Bomber because that just doesn't make sense whatsoever. So I, I kind of should have thought of that, but whatever. So now I think we can sort of narrow it down from here. So as it said, it didn't just say it was a twin. It was actually an evil twin. So let's try and pull out the evil in each of the twins that we are left with. So starting with Alan, all he does, he likes feral cats. I don't really see someone liking feral cats. That's, like, the only thing we know about him. I don't really see him as being the Mad Bomber, just in my opinion. Chris is a really open book, seeing as all we know about him is that he's really good at making films. Like, gee, he's better than me. He should have, like, his own YouTube account. For Earl, well, if we're going off my little mini theory, I guess that uh, he's kind of a jerk, but I guess not. Uh, Wilson, the, just going off of his tone of voice and uh, his um, him being based off the 16 model, I have a feeling that he may be a bit snobbish, but again, I'm just grasping at straws. Now, finally, we're left with Scott John. Now you may be saying, William, no, it just can't be Scott John. Like, there's no way it's Scott John. Hear me out. So as we know, Scott and John is the one who, in the film night, when everyone's showing their films from their security cameras, um, Scott and John is the one that uh, says to everyone, or gives everyone the idea of using LPG gas for the new fuel source since the coal supply has been cut off. Perfect sense, you know, like, there's no more coal, he's actually trying to help the railway, like, if this is a good thing. So you're probably still wondering, William, what in the frickity frack jack in the pack, how is how he received the Mad Bomber. Well, when you actually, when you think about it, it's perfect. This is my theory. Are you guys ready? Because I'm about to blow your mind. Scott is young. The inside man, placing bombs around the railway while no one expects it, using his helper mute to go around and do his dirty work, writing cryptings on the wall in blue, which Scottish John can supply from his blue paint color, used to paint himself. But when everyone starts to catch on to the Mad Bomber, he quickly persuades everyone to use utilize LPG gas so we can have a cute, cleaner fuel source, but more importantly, has a mass production line of gas to utilize in his bomb making process which shows in one of the hints where the explosive vans and the LPG vans are stored outside the gas works. And this is the hint that hit home. Guys, when I saw this, I got shivers. I'm still getting shivers right now that when I saw this, this blew my mind. I don't think you guys are ready. When Andy the Diesel says in the dream sequence to Thomas, he looks just like you, Andy wasn't just referring to Tim being a steam engine. He was referring to the engine looking exactly the same as Thomas, being a tank engine and being painted bright blue. Literally looking just like our beloved Thomas the Tank Engine. Did I just blow your mind or what? Honestly, when I first saw that, I knew 100% that I had just cracked the case. I was, honestly, I, I had no clue that I had just found it like that. The thing is, that Andy quote is just out in the open, but everyone just assumes that it is, oh, he just looks just like you, and he's referring to being a steam engine. No, he actually refers to the exact same blue paint color and the exact same being a tank engine. Andy, like, oh my goodness, guys, I can't even believe that I found that out.
So there you have it. There's my full entire theory on who the, I think the Mad Bomber is. But again, this is just my theory. You guys may have a totally different other theory. So you guys can put that in the comments below. Um, to be honest, when I was first going through this, I really thought Earl was the Mad Bomber. I had this big theory for him. But then, obviously, I had to... Uh, like go and analyze all the other possible twin steam engines and when i got to scottish john and i found those hints like the lpg vans and the explosive vans and the gas works and um just the one where i talk about where andy says he looks just like you those hit home i was like ecstatic when i found those out this has really just been a nice trip back in time because again this one was all sparked by someone talking about it in a skype group call and honestly like I when I when we were first talking about it, I kind of forgot. I didn't forget that it existed, but I just like I hadn't watched it in so long. I was like, oh yeah, that thing that I remember that. So when I rewatched it and I was hearing my friends kind of talk about their theories, I was like, this is like no. I to my knowledge, again, I didn't think anyone. I I don't think anyone knows who the Mad Bomber is. So. I had, I, it just, I dropped everything I was doing and I needed to figure out who this was. And honestly, I'm so happy because this was just been a great experience. You still may be wondering though why I had the Trevor hint that he's at every bombing. And um, that, that, that was just because, well, when you think about it, I, now that I think about it, because a lot of people thought he was a mad bomber, but a lot of those hints don't rack up, like he's not an evil twin, I guess he's a steam engine, well he is a steam engine, but like, he's, it, it's just, it doesn't really make too much sense, I think Trevor was more of just, um, a cover-up plan, seeing as Leo, like, I feel like Earl and Trevor most, um, likely were cover-up plans, like, so, um, Leo could create more thoughts in your head, like, oh, Trevor may be the Mad Bomber, or Earl may be the Mad Bomber, leading you away from, like, the overall that Scottish John is the Mad Bomber, which is crazy. Like, I still can't get over that I figured it out. Like, not to toot my own horn here, but I really think I got this one right. I don't, looking back now, I don't know who else could, I have no clue in, like, who could have been the Mad Bomber. Like, I've just analyzed the, because even when I figured it out, I still had to completely analyze each, every one of the twins, and it just makes total sense. Before I go, uh, I, I just want to give a huge thanks to my friends for giving their theories in the video. But and also, I want to say huge thanks to Leo because, again, Leo, this video, if you're watching this right now, this video is, I know, not just for me, for probably thousands of people out there. This is one of the biggest inspiring videos for people to start using to YouTube. So, like, honestly, you just brought, you put so much effort into your videos. I really think this is a video that is one for the record book because this video is one of the most, like, well-crafted and well-manipulated. Like, you put so much hard work and effort into this, and it's really sad that you can't continue on, but it makes sense. No one really wants to get caught up in legal troubles because that wouldn't be good. And people were saying, it's just too bad that the Internet today has to ruin great things. Like, come on. So yeah, thanks to my friends, thanks to Leo, and thank you for you guys for watching this video. Again, please leave your comments down below what you thought of my theory, and who you think the Mad Bomber is for yourself. But r really, other than that, I don't have anything else to say. I've been working on this video non-stop. I was working on this other, the train spotting video, I talked about my live stream before this. But I knew, I like, I had that halfway done, but I knew when I figured out this theory that I just had to do this first because I really wanted to get this out now but um yeah hopefully you guys think this was pretty good theory because I worked my butt off on this and I think it really paid off so yeah I don't really have much to say so thank you guys for watching stay tuned for more videos and as always goodbye Bob and Margot carried on delivering the food supplies down their branch line. Margot is a mad bomber. Confirmed!